Faces is a new feature in OS X Leopard that allows you to have multiple desktop working areas on your Mac. Certain applications can be assigned to open on each desktop space. If you don't know much about Spaces, take a look at the Expose and Spaces lesson in Section 2 of our Leopard Overview course. Overall, Spaces is a handy feature. However, it can get confusing when switching between Spaces as they all look pretty much identical. Hyperspaces helps with that by adding space titles and allowing you to assign different desktop backgrounds to each space. Once installed, Hyperspaces resides up on the menu bar. To edit the Hyperspaces settings, go into Preferences. The Spaces Preferences choice takes you to the Apple System Preferences for Spaces. I'm going to go over to the Hyperspaces tab first. Here I can add or remove rows or columns of spaces, just like in the Spaces System Preferences. Below that, though, are four tabs that provide several more options. You can see that right now the name Space 1 is in the upper left of my display. I can turn that off using this option. I can also rename this space and change the font, size, or color it's displayed in. The opacity can even be reduced. I'll stick with white at 75% opacity and leave the name Space 1. To edit the other spaces, click on the corresponding blue box. One unfortunate thing is that I can't quickly duplicate the font settings I entered for space 1 onto my other spaces. I'll need to re-enter them if I want the spaces to look space names to look the same. Or I can make them all look unique with different fonts and colors. The position of the space name can be moved by clicking in this box to the right. I'll put the space names in their corresponding corner. In the next tab over I can add background images to each space. Just click the space you want to add the background image to and click this button with three dots. I'll assign this photo of leaves to space 2 and a sunset photo to space 3. In space 4, I'm just going to add a solid background color. In the last tab, I can assign a hotkey for each space. I'm going to assign Control-1, Control-2, Control-3, and Control-4 for my spaces. Now I can go to any space with a single keystroke. In the Hotkeys tab, I can assign more shortcuts for showing the switcher, adding or removing columns or rows of spaces, and switching to the next space. The switcher is a graphical look of all my spaces that pops out under the menu bar. I will keep the Option Apostrophe shortcut to bring it up. Once it's up, I can use my mouse or the arrow keys to move to a certain space. 
In the switch to next space shortcuts, I'll use command and right arrow keys for next, and command and left arrow for back. In the general tab, I can assign hyperspaces to open on login, which is a good idea if you plan to use hyperspaces every day. If I turn off the show desktop backgrounds in the switcher, I get a basic blue backgrounds in the switcher graphic. This menu changes what is displayed in the menu bar. I can either assign just the name or just an icon or both. The draw desktop backgrounds option only needs to be turned off if you are running one of the apps it mentions here. This menu will tell hyperspaces to draw your desktop background over any icons on the desktop. So all you'll see is the background. I like to turn off the text labels under the dock option. This will adjust the position of the space name to not be covered by the dock. And finally, hyperspaces can animate the change from one space to another. I'll check this and assign a transition time of 1.5 seconds. Now as I change spaces, the backgrounds fade into each other and the space names slide to their new position. So that's hyperspaces. If you've tried using spaces before and decided not to stick with it, hyperspaces might add the functionality needed for you to start utilizing spaces more often. The visual cues in hyperspaces make it easier to know what space you are working in at all times, which makes a big difference. You can download a free trial of hyperspaces at the link below this video. A full license costs $12.95.